The true story of Santa Claus begins with Saint Nicholas, who was born during the third century in what is modern day Turkey. Nicholas became known throughout the land for his generosity to those in need, his love for children, and his concern for sailors and ships. One story tells of a poor man with three daughters. In those days, a young woman's father had to offer a prospective husband something of value, also known as a dowry. The larger the dowry, the better the chance that the young women would find a good husband. Without a dowry, a woman was unlikely to marry. This poor man's daughters without dowries, therefore, were destined to be sold into slavery. Mysteriously, on three different occasions, a bag of gold appeared in their home providing the needed dowries. The bags of gold tossed through an open window are said to have landed in the stockings or shoes left before the fire to dry. This led to the custom of children hanging stockings or putting out shoes eagerly awaiting gifts from St. Nicholas. We go from the appearance of St. Nicholas wearing clothes of a bishop to the red and white suit we have all come to recognize as Santa, all because of one man's imagination. Thomas Nast immigrated to America from Landau, Germany when he was five years old. With limited education and little artistic training, he joined the art staff of Frank Leslie's Illustrated as a teenager. In 1860, Nass traveled to Italy as a war correspondent for the Illustrated London News and New York Illustrated News, embedding himself with Giuseppe Garibaldi's campaign to liberate and unify Sicily in the southern Italian states. Nass depicted what he saw in pencil, crayon, ink, and paint in a sketchbook. Upon his return to the United States in December 1860, Nass began to cover the American Civil War for the New York Illustrated News. In 1862, the artist joined Harper's Weekly as its war correspondent. Just 22 years old at the time, Nass was often summoned to battlefields to draw what he saw firsthand. He worked for the Weekly until 1877. During his tenure, Nass created hundreds of cartoons, including the Democratic Donkey, the Republican Elephant, Uncle Sam, Columbia, Tammy the Tiger, and of course, Santa Claus. In the past, Santa was presented in various ways, but Nass conceived and introduced our modern image of Santa Claus. For the next 30 years, Nass continued to draw Santa, changing the color of his coat from tan to red he's known for today. His image of Santa Claus was the inspiration for the Coca-Cola Company's modern Santa Claus ad campaign. In 1870, Nass moved his family out of New York City to Morristown, New Jersey, believing it would be a safe distance from his political enemy, William Boss Tweed of New York. Although his work for Harper's took him to New York weekly for overnight stays, Nass was an active resident of Morristown. He was an honorary member of the fire department and supported local efforts and charities. Many of his drawings depict his home, Villa Fontana, located just across the street from McCullough Hall. Following reversals in both his relationship with the editor at Harper's and his personal fortune, Nass nearly bankrupt by the turn of the 19th century. In 1902, President Theodore Roosevelt appointed Nass in a minor diplomat to Ecuador. The only steady paying job the artist could find, Nass traveled to Ecuador, where he died of yellow fever just a few months after his arrival. For more information on Thomas Nast, please check out the following. McCullough Hall in Morristown, New Jersey. And 
the following books. Thomas Nass works will live on from his political drawings and of course that jolly old St. Nicholas, Santa Claus.